Hi, it's Mary again. Mary Daisy at Le Chateau de Chien. And um, the Home of Petit Treasure Rescue and Sanctuary. Uh, the last post I had started talking about um, going back to my first autoimmune disorder um, diagnosis um, as a teenager. And then uh, shortly after I got married, it was called a gastritis, but then later it was called IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. And I had a doctor tell me that everyone who has fibromyalgia has IBS. It sort of goes hand in hand. Today I want to talk about another issue, and that is fibromyalgia and cervical stenosis. For years, uh, my neck was in pain, probably from my early 20s on. And I, I keep stressing sometimes that when I start to talk about something, it'll make even more sense later on when you get another diagnosis. But um, this is one of those times because when I was going to my pain doctor and I was referred to that doctor by my rheumatologist, um, when I started having issues with my hands where I couldn't even hold a pen or a cup, he sent me immediately to a doctor in Chicago and had uh, diagnosed me with the cervical stenosis and they fused, I think C3 through seven, I, I'm not, I don't really remember right now. But the point I'm trying to make is, number one, if you're diagnosed with fibromyalgia and you're going to a doctor who understands what can happen to you down the line, you can start doing things to save your neck and save uh, the problems that you will encounter as far as the acute pain. Um, in my case, when my pain doctor sent me to Chicago to have the surgery after doing x-rays and MRIs of my neck, the pain didn't stop. It didn't help. And eventually it was found out that is because I was diagnosed with Sjogren's. And I'm not going to get into a bunch of stuff with Sjogren's because I'm trying to stay with one, one diagnosis at a time, which is fibromyalgia. But I also want to stress that um, when I was diagnosed with the Sjogren's and my doctor with um, TMJ issues and the doctor I was referred to had just been diagnosed himself with Sjogren's five weeks before I was diagnosed and as a result he had been just Pouring over everything he could find related to Sjogren's. 
and he had the exact same issue with his hands. And he also said that TMJ is now considered an autoimmune disorder. And I explained to him that I had come to him because my doctor told me my neck pain went from the middle of my shoulder blade all the way up the side of my head. And it was so tight and it couldn't relax and I was in constant agony to the point of tears. And he said, I was sent to him to get Botox to relax the muscle. And he said, well, he could do that, but he preferred to treat the disease itself, which took months. Um, you went through all kinds of testing, and then they did molds, and then they made a splint, which is like a retainer, and you went every week for so long and you would get shots uh, in the back of your mouth. You would have your splint um, filed down to take pressure off of other areas till eventually it, it finally did work. Finally took the neck pain away. However, if you don't wear it at times, at, you usually just wear it at night, but if I don't wear it, uh, the pain will return relatively fast. And the reasons that I wouldn't wear it at night sometimes was, was that I had so many mouth ulcers from the dry mouth from showgirls. And an interesting uh, point about the showgirls also is it can cause low hemoglobin. And I shared with you earlier about being hospitalized last summer for MRSA and then Rocky Mountain spotted fever. They were doing blood tests all the time, every week. And my liver enzymes were elevated to the point where they said I had uh, cirrhosis and I had low hemoglobin. And so after I was out of the hospital, they sent me to other specialists. And one of them was a hematologist because of below hemoglobin. And after all the testing, the hematologist said that he felt the only logical explanation was that this was a side effect of the Sjogren's uh, that I had. And on my next visit to my TMJ specialist, asked me about my hemoglobin and I said well I was actually just diagnosed with low hemoglobin and he said that his father had just died of it in his 70s I believe early 70s and um, so it's just another addition that if your neck starts hurting Go to somebody, start reading, uh, find out if you think you have fibromyalgia, which along with your neck hurting and your trigger points, uh, spots all over your body, um, maybe you need to find out if you have fibromyalgia or if you have dry mouth, and dry eyes. There's primary Sjogren's 
but if you have a lot more symptoms, it's probably secondary where all, all of your organs are involved. But that was uh, basically what I wanted to talk about with the thyroid myalgia today because the neck pain is excruciating and um, if you find out about it early enough, there are things you can do. Um, Weight-bearing exercises are one thing, but another interesting is that some people with these issues, like myself, have very fluid joints. Um, at 66, I can still bend into a pretzel. And my rheumatologist explained that, you know, way back when, in the 50s, if you could contort into all kind of positions, it was called being double jointed. Now it's called a laxidity. And because you have the laxidity, now at these at this age and probably earlier, uh, it causes you to have more injury. So it's possible that the degree of neck pain and stenosis is also caused because you have this black system. I recently have had a lot of problems with my, uh, not just neck, but my right shoulder all the way to the elbow and I think it's from what I'm doing as far as picking things up with my right hand and doing and it's the way I use that arm and in people whose muscles are just, or their joints or ligaments are just regular and don't have this laxity. Um, they're not as prone to injury. Whereas somebody who has a lot of this uh, laxity injures themselves and it's hard to fix. Uh, especially the older you get, it's hard to tighten muscles. again and move on to the next issue of fibromyalgia. Um, I hope this is helping somebody. If you know of anybody who just talking with you or you might notice them rubbing their neck like I did with a friend recently who would come over and that I do, maybe she should see a TMJ specialist. Um, these are things that, if they're addressed at a much earlier age, can be prevented. And most of these things are genetic, so you need to tell your children to have your grandchildren followed. It's so important to identify at an earlier age. And fibromyalgia, when I was diagnosed, took maybe five to eight years to get a diagnosis. Just like when I was diagnosed with the Sjogren's, they were saying that took five 
or more years. I know mine took a lot more than five years. So if I had known I could have done something 10 years earlier so I wouldn't have broke every tooth in my mouth. So I wish I um, so these, these are some of the ridiculous things that happen when people have autoimmune issues. And I will keep going and sharing. And the last thing I want to tell you is everything I talk about and research, I pin. And you can find my pins under Mary Daisy or the Teachers or Rescue Sanctuary. And I'll have an MTHFR board. I will have a fibromyalgia board. So you can look up a ton of articles this way and again I cannot stress getting the information from the smart patients and other forums and listening to what everyone else is saying not doctors but patients hope you have a really good night bye bye